In this video, we are going to do a basic introduction into data frames in R, um, see how we can um, import the data, how to check that it's been imported correctly, and how to do some basic calculations with a data frame. So a data frame is just a very efficient way of storing data in R, and it's much more efficient. It uses a lot less memory. It works faster than if you stored your data in, for instance, a matrix. So before we can import the data, we first want to set our working directory. So I've already added my code here in the console. I don't want to add it into my script because when you guys are uploading your scripts to um, Gradescope, you don't want to set a working directory in there. It's not going to find that working directory and it's going to lead to an error. So you want to do that in your console. Just remember to do it before you start and make sure that you put your files um, so, for instance, your CSV document that you want to import into that working directory. Also, just remember, as we told you in practical zero, that we want to use forward slashes when we specify a directory. You can, of course, do it by clicking here on session and finding your working directory as well, or you can use the code to do that. If you do decide to add it into your script, you can always also just comment it out and then you won't into, run into any errors. So I've set my working directory. I've already placed my file in my um, working directory. My script is saved, saved in that same directory. So everything should work now. So when I import my data, I'm going to call it my data, very imaginative name. And I'm going to import it using the read.csv function. So the read.csv function is set up to deal specifically with CSV files, which is what we're working with in this case. So CSV file is just a file without any formatting where all of your, um, uh, your information is separated by comma. So that's what the name stands for, comma separated. Um, and I don't know what the V is for. Now, the file name is the important thing to specify here. So we have called this file practical to um, example data. So it has to be obviously exactly the same as the, um, the name on the file. So you can copy and paste from there as well. And if I run this, you'll see that I now have a data set with 10 observations, three variables. So Please check that this is the case. Depending on your computer settings, you might run into some issues if you um, import like this. So I'm going to show you very briefly, and this is also covered in the practical document. You might have to add a separator um, argument as well, uh, depending on your computer settings. So if this didn't work, if you didn't get in your environment this data set exactly like I did, you might have to specify here that the separator is a semicolon or you might have to specify uh, that it is a comma. So depending on your computer setup, one of these could work if this first option doesn't work. But in most cases, the first option will work. Now to check if the data is stored in a data frame, we can see here we have the data and we can just go and view it if we wanted to. So if I press that, we can see this is what the data set looks like. We have 10 observations, three variables called x1, x2, and x3. Now, if we want to check that the data has been stored in a data frame, that it's not stored in a matrix, for instance, then all we need to do is type is.data.frame, and we type the name of the data set. And if I run that, you can see that the console tells us true. So it means my data is correctly stored. If it's not stored as a data frame, then you could go and force it to be a data frame by using the code my data and as dot uh, as data frame. And you would just type my data here again. So you can see that it's just saying take my data and force it to be a data frame and put it back into my data again. So that's what that code would have done. And if you then went and ran the check, you'll see that it will say true. So it wasn't a problem here, but in case you run into that issue, that's one way of solving it. Now, let's say we want to calculate the totals for each sample and store it in a vector called total. 
then what we're basically asking you to do here is for each of these 10 samples, you want to go and add these values. So you can do it manually, but that's a lot of calculations to go and do. So luckily R has a few functions you can use and we're just going to store it in total like we said uh, or assign it to total and we can guess the function name so row um, row sums that's the function we want to use we can then go and put in my data and if this works we should have a vector with 10 values in there so if I run this you can see Yes, I have 10 values. So I often like to just do a quick check and say, let's say we want to just view my data and the first row. So it's always good to check that your, um, your, uh, your things work the way they should. We can use R as a calculator and you can just say, um, let's take my data um, or let's actually use the sum function, that would be more fun. Sum of my data, you can do it with pluses or with this way, my data, the first row, first column, my data, the first row, second column, and my data, first row, third column, and we can see that's the answer we get. And if we compare it to total, the first observation, then we can see it's the same answer. So it worked. So this is just a quick way of doing this calculation. You'll see that there's also functions that can do as the sum of the columns, or um, you can even calculate averages for the rows or averages for the columns.